How's it going everyone? So I recently showcased a chain animation that I did on my Instagram story this one right here and I got a lot of questions asking how I did it so I'm going to show you guys how to animate some chains in Blender. Alright so hopping into Blender we have our default scene here with our camera light and cube let's just go ahead and get rid of those we don't need any of that so with that deleted let's go ahead and make our chain object so to create our chain object we're going to go ahead and hit shift a and then we're going to go to our mesh and find the torus object we want to keep this relatively low poly so this little menu will pop up in the left and this will allow us to edit the properties of this torus that we just created. I'm going to drop this down to 12 major segments, increase the major radius by a little bit, and then the minor radius as well to thicken this chain up just a tish. And of course, you can make any kind of chain object. This tutorial isn't about the chain. It's more about how to simulate the chain. So go ahead, have some fun, create a cool, interesting chain. I'm just going to stick to something simple for the sake of this tutorial. With that done, I'm going to go ahead and shade it smooth. And by hitting 7, we'll hop up to the top view. Now let's go ahead and extend this to more of a chain shape. So by hitting tab, we hop into edit mode, hitting option Z lets us go into our wireframe view or you can go up here and hit this little icon right here if you haven't already i highly recommend learning all your shortcuts it just makes working so much faster so if i'm hitting a bunch of shortcuts i have the screencast keys down here so you kind of get an understanding of what i do if i forget to mention it because i'm just so used to using all my shortcuts anyway with that out of the way we're going to go ahead and select the top part right here and we're going to hit y so this will kind of separate the mesh and then we can move this up by hitting g and y and we have just separated this mesh right here. Now we want to bridge these together. By hitting option Z again, we hop out a wireframe view and we're going to option select our edge loops. And from here, we are going to hit command E. This brings up our edge menu and you can see we have all these options. We're gonna bridge our edge loops and this will connect those two segments. Go ahead and repeat this on the other side. And boom, just like that, we have our first chain shape. So now that we have this chain modeled, it's very important that we do certain things the right way. That way we don't get any weird bugs or artifacts that happen from the next steps here. First things first, with my item selected, go ahead and hit N. This will bring up your context menu is what I like to call it. You just have all these things, all your add-ons and stuff on the side. If we go up to this very first one, you can't see it because I have so many add-ons, but this one's item right here. And so this will show you all the items information such as scale, rotation, location, all that good stuff. And you'll see our origin is right here on the center where of the center of the world. And this is what we want. This is very important if you want everything to run smoothly. For this, we're gonna be doing a rigid body simulation. And it's very important that we have a large scale on our objects just because Blender calculates things a lot easier when they're big objects. So what we're gonna do with our object is we're gonna scale this up by five. So we'll make it pretty big and we want to apply our scale by hitting command A and then hitting scale. So this brings it back down to one instead of five. Now to create the actual chain. So there's two methods we can do. The first being pretty simple, go into edit mode, hit A for all to select everything, shift D, right click, and then P to separate by selection. And then go ahead and take this one. Then we're gonna rotate this on the Y by 90 degrees and move it along that Y as well, just before they clip together. So we're gonna move this just before they touch and boom, you can already see we're starting to create this chain shape. And then what you can do is just hit Shift D Y, keep on duplicating this until you get the desired length of your chain. However, a better way is to use some modifiers. So here's the better method to create a chain object. So with our chain selected, we're gonna go over to our modifiers tab and we're going to add in an array modifier. So you'll notice right off the bat, it aligns it to the side instead of forward. So we go over here and we're gonna change some values around, change this over to the Y axis. And just like before, we don't want these to intersect. So move it just before they start to intersect on those loops right there. And now how do we turn this exactly? So this is the beauty of modifiers. So go ahead and hit shift A. We're gonna add in a new empty object. Just the plain axis is fine. We can go ahead and just leave it that right here by selecting our chain again. We're gonna hop over to our array modifier, go down to object offset, and we're gonna select this empty that we just created. You'll see nothing happens, and that's because there's no transformations happening on our empty object. But if we were to rotate this on the Y axis by 90 degrees, you'll notice that it switches that next instance for the array modifier 90 degrees and then if we were to come in here and increase our count you'll see that we now have a chain being created it's also important at this point that you want to save your project so hit command s to bring up your save menu and i'm just going to call this chain tutorial 
Now at the beginning of this tutorial, I mentioned how we wanted everything to kind of happen at the origin and we didn't want to move anything around too much. And this next step is why. So now what we're going to do is we're going to add in a curve circle. So hey, shift A, go over to your curve and then find the circle object. Go ahead and bring that in. Just go ahead and tab out, puts you into edit mode to start and then scale this bad boy up. And you'll notice that it has some geometry to it. So we go over to our curve settings and just go ahead and get, turn the fill mode over to none. And then just go ahead and mess around with the scale. It doesn't really matter at the start, we'll fine tune this. But now that we have this in here, the next thing that we're gonna do is on our chain, once again, go to the modifiers and then close the array. We're gonna add in a curve modifier. So by selecting our curve object, you will see that it starts to go around the curve, but you'll also notice that this is where the weird wonkiness starts to happen. And this is where you kind of have to play with what your object is. So the deform axis, is clearly off. So right now it's deforming on the X. We don't want that. We want it deforming on the Y. So this can be kind of finicky. You got to play with it. So this curve modifier can be super wonky. That's why if I know I'm going to be using it, I try to keep everything around the origin so I don't get any weird wonkiness because you'll notice if you put this somewhere else and you start messing with stuff, it gets pretty weird and it breaks pretty fast. So try to keep it around the origin, especially when you're starting because once you bake everything, you can move it around with an empty later on. So try to keep it nice and centered. But with this done, we're going to open up our array and we're going to increase our count as well you'll notice we first of all run into an issue right here one i want this to be a nice longer and thinner chain so what we can do is hop into edit mode and by hitting a we select our main chain and we scale this down another pro tip is you'll notice that it changes us to the default settings if you want to see this actively happen on your modifiers hit this little vertex thing right here and you'll see that it actually shows what's going on on your chain. So this is super useful for visualization. So go ahead and select this little vertex icon right here. And then by scaling this down, you'll see we're making a smaller and longer chain. So now we have to accommodate with our array modifier. And so another thing that you'll notice as we get closer to the end here, it doesn't perfectly line up. Go ahead and just do that same technique where we scale this until it lines up. And then once you have it lined up, it's perfect. So here's our chain object, nice and done. Now it's time for the simulation part. We're gonna be applying our modifier. So this is gonna become a destructive workflow. So I always recommend saving a backup. So I'm gonna select everything, shift D to duplicate this. And then by hitting M, we can create a new collection for this. I'm gonna call this one OG chain. And this way, if we mess up down the line on our simulation or anything, we wanna change anything before this point, we can. So go ahead and just hide this. And then now we can apply our modifiers on our chain. And you'll notice this bakes in all the chain. So you can see each one is its own individual element versus before it was these instances. Now we can also delete the curve modifier because all we need is the chain. We can delete our empty as well. Now we're just left with our torus object up here. So we can go ahead and rename this to chain. Now this is where the fun begins and we start to animate this object. With our chain selected, we're gonna tab into edit mode one more time. We're gonna hit A for everything and we're gonna separate all these links into their own individual objects so we can add in a rigid body simulation. So with all of them selected, hit P and separate by loose parts. Now you'll notice that each individual chain is its own object and it's super useful that we renamed it too so it has a nice naming convention. And now you'll notice, however, there's one issue. All the chain's origins are at the center of the world because that's where the previous origin was. To fix this, we're gonna select all of our chains once more, hop over here to our object mode, set origin, origin to geometry and you'll see that that brings the origin to each individual center of the object. This is just important for physics because that, that's kind of, it treats it as the center of mass. Now with this done, it's time to get into the simulation part of this. So what we're gonna do first of all is add in a rigid body constraint to all of these. So with our link selected, head over to the physics properties tab, rigid body, and then we wanna set the shape over to mesh. So the collision matches the shape of the object. You'll notice if we hit play, it starts to fall, so it's working, but it's not colliding with anything else. So how do we fix this? With this one selected, make sure that this is your main object that we added the rigid body onto. Hold shift and then box select everything else. And by hopping up to object, rigid body, copy from active, we will copy this rigid body constraint to every object. So now you'll notice if we hit play, they all fall. And so the reason that it's only falling is because the only thing affecting the scene right now is gravity. So how do we fix this, adjust this, all this good stuff? First thing that we can do is head over to our scene properties right here. This is where all your rigid body world settings are gonna be right under this tab. You have things such as your settings, your cache, your field weights, all the stuff that you're gonna need in this little section. 
So the first thing that I like to do is just increase my sub steps and iterations right here to 20, just in case if you have anything that's moving really fast, it still kind of calculates those in between frames so you don't get anything breaking apart. So go ahead and boost this up. It will slow down a tish, but it's worth it as it adds in more quality to your simulation. The biggest one here is just the gravity one. So depending on what you're trying to do with your chain, for the sake of this tutorial, we're gonna go for a low gravity kind of simulation. So we're gonna change our gravity down to something super low, like 0.05. If I hit play again, the chain moves super slowly. It's still moving down, but it's moving very slowly down. So that's what we want. And then another thing as well, most of the time you'll notice that your simulations run a little slower than you'd like. So I always increase my timeline to some more frames, but you'll notice down here, simulation still stops at 250. So we have to change the cache settings. So over here, you'll notice right above field weights, we have cache, go ahead and hop over in here and set the end over to something like 500 and that'll update that for you. And now let's go ahead and make this look pretty freaking sweet. So we have two options. We can use force fields and we can do animation. So we're gonna do both for the sake of this tutorial. So let's say I want this chain here to rise up and the rest of the chain is falling down. So how do we do this? So with this chain selected, we're gonna head over to our physics properties once again. And we wanna turn this over to an animated object since we're gonna be adding on keyframes. We're gonna head over here and we're gonna insert a single keyframe on the Z axis. We're gonna keep it simple for this. And we're gonna move a few frames over in time, like 220. And we're going to bring this up to about, let's do 18.5 and then insert another single keyframe. Going back to the start of the animation, you will notice that it slowly goes up and it grabs the rigid body chains next to it. This is one way to animate. You can do this on a bunch of different parts. So if we wanted to follow in the footsteps of this one and do this on this one right here. So change this, insert single keyframe, but this one we want it to go down. We can go ahead and do that, insert single keyframe. Now you notice we have two of these objects pushing in different directions. So you can get pretty creative going this way and then animating, kind of hand animating the simulation like this, or a way that I really like to is adding in some force field. Let's add in a turbulence. You'll notice that when I add this in, nothing happens. That's because our objects are so large and this thing is tiny. So we need to increase the strength. Let's do like 600, something pretty major. And you'll notice now if I hit play, each of these chains has a little bit of warble to them and they're kind of moving around and it's a lot more turbulent on this simulation. And right here, we already have a really cool effect happening on our chain, but let's just say we want these ripples to be bigger. You can see it's kind of on a per chain basis and we want it to be kind of like certain links happening. So we can go over here to the size of our turbulence and turn this up to something like 200. And now you'll notice that the displacement is a lot bigger. So you'll see it's these large swooping arcs versus those small ones. We can even drop this down. This is a bit much for my taste. And just like that, we have something nice. And you'll notice with this, since we have these animated chains in here, so anything that's animated is gonna be overridden and you're not gonna be able to affect it with a turbulent thing. So you can see that these are just following their course and not really doing much. So keep that in mind when you're doing these animations. I'm gonna delete the keyframes on this one just so we have that one chain. See, it's not moving. So anytime you have a rigid body constraint that is animated, it will not be affected by any kind of force fields or anything like that. So make sure that if you want anything to move around, you have this unchecked and you'll see as soon as I do that, it follows back in line with the simulation. And this is one of those things too, as you notice by doing that, you can also animate, you can animate when something lets go. So let's just say we want this latched on and then boom, it gets disconnected. So you have a lot of freedom in animating these chains. And as you can see by my system, it's pretty performant. We're running a little bit less than 24, kind of half, half the frames. And I'll show you guys really quick. If you hop over to this setting, drop this back down to 10 for your sub steps. But you can keep this pretty low just for working on it but just know for final render bump these up a little bit that way if anything it kind of just stops some wonky stuff from happening so bump those up but that's going to bring us to the end of the tutorial at the end of the day this is a simulation so you can make this as crazy or as subtle as you want this animation is now in your court, so feel free to do whatever you like with it. You have all these tools at your disposal in the force field tab. You can hand animate each chain individually, all these cool things, but now you know how to animate chains in Blender pretty easily. I hope this video was helpful. If you wanna see more or have any suggestions for tutorials that I should do in the future, go ahead and drop a comment down below. I'll be taking a look at those. But with that said, hope you guys enjoyed and have fun making some chains now. What the fuck? <clears throat> I thought this shit was just already in Blender. Hold on, guys. I'm learning something as we do this tutorial. I'm learning how to do screencast keys. I thought this shit was built in the Blender. What the fuck? It's an add-on? All right. Hold on. BRB, you got to go get an add-on. <laughs>